just a very quick video showing you testing of my new production uh, microcurrent PCB panels because it's actually quite important up until now I've been testing these myself but I'm going to manufacture another 1800 of these and well testing them all myself not that great even though it's very quick as you'll see here no doubt so um, I'm going to test uh, five panels here today 50 boards total to get a, a reasonably you know accurate average time of how long it uh, takes to test each board like this. These are, uh, here's my new production uh, panel assembled by a company called Soltronico um, up the coast here from Sydney. They're a couple of hours up the uh, coast, so they are local. Um, and they've been assembling my boards for me, doing a good job, but I'm also going to get them to do the testing as well, because that's very common in the industry. I'm not going to test 1800 myself. I promised I'd test a couple of hundred, and that's what I've done. But uh, these ones, um, yeah, I'm going to get them to do the production testing. So uh, that's very common in the industry to actually get your assembler to do that. It just makes sense and almost all assemblers will uh, do you know production testing. They might even do a whole what's called a turnkey thing where they order all your parts, they do your assembly, they do your testing, they do your packing, everything else. In fact they're doing more than the testing, they will be doing the packing as well. Um, you know wrapping them up and putting them in the uh, things and all I've got to do is slap on the uh, labels and ship them. So beauty. Now, uh, what this entails is that I need to uh, write some testing uh, documentation, which I haven't done yet. Um, what I'm going to do today is test these five panels to get an average time, and that's important because I have to know because an assembler will typically charge you, you know, per hour of assembly time. So if it if I can test all five of these in an hour, well, you know, it's only going to cost me, you know, a few tens of dollars um, to get these all tested. So you're going to pay by the hour. Um, so I just want an accurate indication. And I'll show you some of my uh, test jigs I've got very quickly. I might go into more uh, detail on this. But uh, anyway, whew, let's give it a go. Now there are of course many different ways to skin this testing cat. And it depends on you know how much effort you want to put into it, how many you're manufacturing, or which assembler you're using, or you know all sorts of uh, stuff. And well, you know, look, I'm not manufacturing tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these. I'm only manufacturing, you know, 1,800 or just a couple of thousand, really. So it doesn't warrant full big bed of nails tested. If I was doing this for a company, I might automate it more than this, for example. Like, you would do a big uh, bed of nails with little pogo pins which come down, contact with some of the pads, and power up the boards and things like that. And that's one of the things with this. It actually takes, you want to minimize every operation possible when you're doing production testing like this. For example, if I have to insert a battery, a coin cell battery, into every one of these, that takes time. And then, because I'm not allowed to ship the coin cell batteries, I've just got to take those back out anyway. So it makes sense to actually have a test jig which powers these up. Now, I've done a video on this before. I've actually added power routing traces around the outside of my panel coming to this test connector on the side and well this allows me to power up all the boards at once with a little battery box like this there's three AAA batteries in here and that just powers up there you go leads are all coming on so all these ones actually work um, and I can switch individual ones off of course and stuff like that um, but there you go that that you know saves a whole ton of time and once I and I'll test them in the panel like this and once I've done that then all I've got to do is chop them out and bang wrap them up and they're ready to go or my assembler is going to do that anyway and uh, to do this testing as I said could have done a bed of nails tester some automated jig I did allow for um, I did bring the outputs of all of these out to this card edge connector but in the end I decided really essentially wasn't worth it because I had to plug in the test current anyway I didn't bring out didn't have enough room to route out the test current uh, well the input current traces on each board as well um, so yeah that would have had to have been done with a big bed of nails thing and it would have had to have automated switch in because they're all ground reference I've mentioned this before the outputs are all ground reference so I'd need isolated current generators for each one gets really really messy and yeah if I was working at a, a company as I've done I've produced countless number of these uh, production test jigs and things like that and yeah I might go to more town you know I might go to town on it because I might have you know a month to set up a test system or something like that so yeah here it doesn't really warrant it so all I'm going to do 
is power them all up and I figure that well I had to plug them in anyway I had to plug in the current source so why not do the monitoring as well so instead of using this I've now got myself a little uh, micro current uh, test jig board with and basically there's a, there's a power LED on there and there's an offset uh, thing to measure the output offset voltage is within spec and then there's an in spec led there with the uh, with a window uh, comparator on that so it just uh, and this is uh, very accurate it's all trimmed and ready to go so I can plug that into here like this and then I can plug my current source into here and bang I can just go around boom 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 like that it's literally that easy it might take you know 10 or 20 seconds you know, oh, 20 seconds maybe, 30 seconds to go around and test all boards. Certainly less than a minute. So all I have to do is plug in my battery box in the top there. Sorry, I've got it on this orientation so that you'll be able to uh, actually see the LEDs on this light up. I've got my precision, in this case it's the uh, 1 milliamp uh, current source going into there. So it feeds the precision 1 milliamps into there. And I've got this all powered up and all I've got to do is it will ensure that the switches are all set to the... Uh, to the uh, microamp position because I'm getting one volt out. So I feed in one milliamp, I get one volt out of here, and my window detector is designed to detect that one volt plus minus the 0.05 spec. So I simply plug it in there, and bang, there it is. My green light comes on, and I just go along and test them like that. That is how quick it is. Awesome. And of course, depending on which uh, turns out to be the most efficient way to do it, usually batch. Uh, is so if you had five panels like this I would go along I'd set all these switches to one position on all of them and then go along and then swap the panel and do the next one with the same current source like this and then so do them all on the nanoamp range do them all on the microamp range and then go along and do them all on the milliamps uh, range as well but it depends I can have you know build multiple versions of these so I can just do the one panel like this go along ten times test get the next one, plug, uh, change all the switches, get the next one, boom, boom, boom. But as you can see, it's going to be really, really quick. There's no test leads or anything else mucking around required. Now, unfortunately, I haven't actually built up my uh, one amp uh, precision current source yet, so I'm going to have to use uh, external, uh, calibrated external uh, power supply. So there you go, that was just under 15 minutes to test all three ranges on every board, on all five panels for all 50 boards. So that's only, about, calculates out to about 17.4 seconds per PCB tested. And that includes, you know, switching the ranges, plugging the things on, dicking around, maybe doing the odd manual, manual uh, check and things like that. That's very impressive, rounded up to, you know, 20 or 25 seconds or something like that and you know uh, that's bingo you've got your average time taken to test each board and yes there were a couple of failures this one uh, for example I marked them um, up here this one just failed on the amps range I uh, checked it it was getting no output so uh, let's have a look at that and see if we can uh, troubleshoot that one now let's take a look at the board here and uh, because it only failed on the amps range but past the other ranges that tells me that basically there's likely something wrong with the current shunt down here because if the other range is passed that means the two amplifiers in here are working the gains of those are spot on my uh, split supply generator for the uh, power supply for the battery is working you know everything's just fine so it's got to be that sucker down there let me see if I can get a let's see if we can uh, get close into there hello Hello, let me get a better angle on that. And there you go, bingo, look at that, there's our culprit. It hasn't reflowed. 
one of them slightly un, you know uh, slightly under temperature just because this is a fairly large you know large ish mass uh, thermal component uh, especially compared to the other ones with a big large trace coming off here it just didn't reach enough reflow temp or the flux didn't clean the uh, joint the flux that's embedded in the solder paste didn't clean the joint properly or something like that you know so there you go too easy I can touch that up and it'll work a treat and then likewise I've got another panel with instead of the amps instead uh, well the milliamps it's actually the microamps range but I mark it as the one milliamp uh, test current so let's uh, take a look at that once again it passed on the other ranges so we go down and we have a look at the culprits down in here likely to be no that looks all right there's the uh, there's the shunt for that one that looks just fine to me so it's not that so that's rather strange oh let me double check that no that's actually okay so I don't know what's going on there the only other thing it could be is a dicky connection oh hello <laughs> yeah okay not sure if you can see that but yeah look so yeah the assembler hasn't screwed down that screw tight enough on that jack there you go one of them was loose so the uh, yeah Murphy's law there that just intermittently made uh, contact there and just happened to fail on the milliamps range well these sort of things happen when you start introducing that human process of actually assembling these things I mean you know surface mount boards as far as reflow soldering goes once you've got your thermal profile down right and you're soldering all your parts on and stuff like that you know you can get near you know almost a hundred percent yield fantastic but you know hey the operator's not paying attention they don't screw up that one tight enough meh so there you have it that was uh, quite an eye-opener you know because I I knew it was fairly quick but you know sub 20 seconds per board for all three ranges and dicking around and plugging things and moving panels around and swapping them very impressive 15 minutes for 50 that's like you know 200 better than 200 units an hour fantastic and if you divide the you know hourly uh, cost of one of the uh, assembly uh, line workers which is what they typically uh, charge at plus some you know some overhead on that then really you know it doesn't add much cost at all but it's important to get your uh, production tests down to a suitable level and yeah I could make this one even quicker with some sort of automated bed of nails thing but uh, you know really it's it's a matter of uh, return on your time and money investment there and really it's not uh, worth it I'm more than happy at the testing time for these things and it's probably going to take the same amount of time again to actually cut uh, you know each individual board out you know it might be another 10 seconds or something to go around and and trim these things out uh, by hand yeah you could probably automate that uh, process as well and you would if you're manufacturing hundreds of uh, thousands of these things or you'd figure out a better way to do it or something like that but yeah as I said there's more than one way to skin a cat and then you have gotta wrap the thing so really you know a lot of people put time and effort into trying you know automate their bed of nails uh, test set up for their board when that could be might be swamped by some other manual process of actually packing and things like that so but really it's not all about the testing I've got to now cut these out and I've got to wrap them up in their uh, anti-static uh, bubble wrap and uh, and then uh, whack them in the padded envelopes and all that stuff is going to take more time than what it took to actually test these things so there you go I hope you enjoyed that uh, little quick look at these uh, production uh, test panels and if you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and as always the EEV blog forum is the place to discuss it it's linked in somewhere down below catch you next time yep it actually took longer to uh, cut up the bubble wrap and wrap the boards than it did to test them go figure and yep you guessed it packing takes even longer again oh.